I live in a van because I want to set myself up to survive. Survival is important to me. I seek out off-grid places where I can be offline, disconnected, and more in tune with nature. I hope to have a farm, a homestead of my own one day, where I can feed myself from the land and the ocean sustainably and respectfully. Thanks so much for joining for this week's video. We are doing a bit of an island adventure, a little bit of catch and cook, some free diving. And I take my beautiful van Siren to this gorgeous remote location. Whoa. I'm at a ferry terminal heading to one of the Gulf Islands with a bunch of free divers. I'm really pumped about this. Four YouTubers here, which is pretty neat. And we're all, um, some of them will be probably doing some spear fishing. Sunrise! It's not often I'm up this early before the sun is up. And you can certainly tell that it is autumn and getting colder. I'm just gonna be doing filming. Maybe I might pick up some sea cucumbers or urchins, something like that. Oh, it's a beautiful day. It is quite misty out. There's been some rain these last few days, which has been a beautiful break from the high summer. The mountains ahead of me are actually topped with mist. And I'm going to another Gulf Island, which I've never been to before. The van sounds great. I recently got both the rinse screen repair booked in and uh, booked into a welder to get the roof rack made. So super exciting things ahead. I should have the roof rack and a new windscreen by November. That's a lot of money. I am a bit overwhelmed by the amount of alternator charging turned on at 30 watts if I switch this one it goes up to switch 60 you can hear it in the alternator there's a slight difference uh, and we're on our way Woo I'm pretty pumped it's nice to go places you've never been before new ferry routes new adventures have you seen my octopus hat? I'm going out there. Good morning everybody, I just woke up and there's very little cell phone service here, way too many trees for the Starlink and I think I'm going to move, I'm going to go out for a little walk around, show you where I am, see if there's any trailheads right nearby so I can go for a trail walk and if not I'm going to move and see if I can go find... 
something on the other end of the island. Yeah, it's a gorgeous morning. It's pretty quiet. I slept pretty well other than like, so on my phone I have a leveling device. I can level in all directions. So I'm like minus two head down and minus one sideways. It's not ideal and my body's pretty sensitive to directional abnormalities because I fell off a ladder once and my hips have never been the same. So I need to move to equalize my body again. But mm, time to put on some clothes. It's a bit cooler actually. And I want to show you outside. I want to show you where I parked not that glamorous but it's also beautiful at the same time <laughs> Now everything is ready to drive, everything's secured. Let me show you around where I'm parked. It's not bad, it's beautiful, but it's literally a side of the road pull out. Doesn't she look beautiful over there? The sun is coming out. I'm drawn to explore places that I could call home one day, to build a homestead, a house, a tiny house, maybe a small farm holding, a big garden, figure out how to survive off grid, but always in very close proximity to the ocean, the wild seas. So I find myself pulled to explore. I don't enjoy the idea of ending another being's life for the sake of sport. Instead, I'm building relationships with their worlds, habitats, and the creatures that I might be interested in catching specifically for food and my survival only. Are they endangered? How do we support their repopulation? Is there a broken food chain in some places? Let me give you an example of the sea urchin, the uni. Sea otter populations were decimated in the Pacific Northwest for their fur. They are the main predators for the sea urchin. The sea urchin in turn, their diet consists of kelp and seaweed. If they are not in check, they decimate our precious kelp forests. The kelp forests are like the forests of the hills and mountains, but of the ocean. They convert huge amounts of CO2 to oxygen and are the nurseries and breeding grounds of young fish, the dwindling herring and the cod and rockfish populations. So when I dive, I look for the overpopulations of things. I see how many of a creature I can see in an area because I'm looking underwater with my own eyes. I want this species to survive and I want to support the ecosystems that they inhabit. This is a narrow point between this island and that and look at the outgoing current, it is just racing. A couple of boats have just zoomed past going through very fast, like 10 knots at least. But you can just literally see how fast the water is moving. I came over here to check out this because I've been thinking about swimming in this kelp forest here. But I really think I might wait till the tide turns so that I'm not sucked out of here 
into here. Whereas if the tide is coming back, it'd be a lot less dangerous. going so fast. If I was a scuba diver drift diving, this would be amazing. Dangerous, but amazing. fast through there. survived my bee sting. <sighs> so beautiful up here. And this narrow waterway is freaking incredible. I'm gonna go back through the forest where my van is and hang out there. I think I will attempt to set up the Starlink and see if I can get some more information on tides and edit for a little bit. A YouTuber who lives on this island who I regularly watch, in fact I think now possibly two, um, Finding Simon and Sailor Barry, uh, which are great boat content for the Southern Gulf Islands. And I saw Simon, but I was just like, I don't need to interrupt your everyday life. I don't need to do some awkward introduction. Like, what is, what am I getting out of that? What is he getting out of that? So I was just there and appreciating the beauty and was like, he doesn't need to know. I <laughs> can just hang out and respect his privacy and admire the beautiful bay and the shipyard and the marina. <sighs> yeah, tis weird, tis the internet. I just did a little editing and got my video to a little bit of a better place. It has to go out tomorrow, so I'm pushing it for time. I can see out the window here that the direction of the tide through the narrow pass has changed. It's coming back in again, which makes me feel a lot safer. I'm not going to get sucked into that path. There is a beautiful eddy where all the kelp is, and I really want to go swim in the kelp forest. So I'm going to get packed up, take my towel, and head outside to go for a swim. Now see that this water has turned massively. This is calm and safe. This could be fun, but I think there's rocks in there. Anyway, should be fun. Hopefully I don't scare this heron. That's a really good look. <laughs> <laughs> the land squid. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
go in the back. Oh, it's in the very bottom now. I would have. Oh, really? Yeah, it could go at some point. It's like walking around like <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty cool one, isn't it? Yeah. It's pretty, uh, pretty decent red rock. Yeah. Super red rock. Yeah. Here's the bounty for today. Some Be careful, see, because they do bite. A few crabs. They're still alive. Oh, this beast here. Beast here. Whoa! Yeah. Catch of the day. <laughs> 78, 79? Yeah, 79. 79 centimeters? Yeah. yeah. Pretty good one? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> nice work. Yeah. The mouth, the inside of the mouth. That creepy teeth. I've been beaten by now. <laughs> what? Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Doing this. Getting the hose? Well, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. I'm just thinking we're a pen though. Did not punch my hand. These beautiful, colorful plates. Of course, yeah. Pen. I'm using the can corner. The one thing. The one right. thing. And then we have pretty rice and yeah. <laughs> some beautifully marinated fish. Turkey's got to cross the road. The sun is rippling on the water. It's so beautiful. I have boccaccini and tomato salad just hanging out in my sunroom. Totally just enjoying this pre-sunset. Oh, my hair looks good after a swim. Yeah, it's going to be lovely. And this is tomatoes from my garden. Yay, life is so good. I am quite happy. People are like, oh, when you live on the West Coast, it's so expensive. Well, you don't get views like this at your Target in Indiana, Rebecca. Oh, the sun off the water is so pretty. My towel's hanging up to dry after my swim. I just finished preserving some more of this box of blueberries. Had some dinner. And I shall meet up with some friends soon. Isn't this just magnificent? Hi everybody, you might realize that I am on moderating the live stream for Amanda and I really wanted to do this um, more justice, but I'm actually 
cooking up a pasta sauce right now with the uni, the sea urchin that I harvested, which I'm really excited about. It's going to be like an onion, garlic, cheese and sea urchin sauce and it smells amazing in here but I'm jumping between doing this and then jumping back on my com uh, computer to moderate comments and um, post in the live stream that Amanda's doing over on her Tideline to Alpine channel. Anyway, kitchen is a mess but I'm having a great time and I'll see you in the chat. And over here I'm cooking up some sea urchin which I caught this weekend, and I'm gonna add it with cheese and herbs. And you're the cutest kitty. You're so cute. You're so cute. Yeah. I made the most amazing dinner. I got uh, green herb rice with lemon and salt, and then this beautiful uh, fried onion, garlic, a little bit of cheese, and then the sea urchins to go on top. This could also be made into a pasta sauce, but it is so delicious. Mmm, I'm so happy. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to the live live stream with Amanda. I'm trying to do this at the same time. I wouldn't have would have filmed a lot more, so I apologize for that, but this is delicious. Mmm. This is so nice. The live stream is finished. Now I get to clean up my cooking mess because I've made an absolute atrocious mess of this. But I wanted to show you, this is the rice and it looks so good. And then the sea urchin row, um, I put into a, a pan and first of all, I fried onions till they were like really translucent, like as if you were making a soup sauce. Then added some garlic and a little bit of water. Then added, I had frozen the sea urchin roll. And then I added that. And then afterwards I added um, just some very rugged, mature uh, cheddar. A little bit of cheddar cheese. Um, and it is so delicious. I did not expect, I thought it would be way more fishy. But it's like a hint of fish but not really strong and it is really nice. Oh my gosh, it was so nice being on a live stream and sharing time with my friends and all of you who I recognize your usernames is so sweet and lovely. I am going to clean up my kitchen bomb site and pet this cat, which is uh, grumpy at me for not paying attention to her. And we'll see you later. Bye. I really hoped you enjoyed coming along with me this week as I learned more about survival food and what it means to live off grid. From last week's video, there's a couple more pottery items left in the shop. So get them while you can. There's a link in the description and up on the screen. I'm not sure when I'll do another update yet. Announcing? that next week I'm taking a week off so there'll be no video next weekend but you can keep informed about what I'm up to over on Patreon where I post many tidbits and behind the scenes. See you all next time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!